Hi everyone, welcome to this video. I am going to be doing a book haul, a book unhaul, and also I'm going to let you know the books that I finished reading lately. September was a really good reading month for me. I feel like I'm out of my reading slump finally, um, and I think it's because I'm just ready for all the spoopy books. So let's get started right away. Um, jump right in, and I'm so excited to show you a few of these books for sure. First and foremost, today Hocus Pocus 2 is released and I'm very excited. I'm wearing my Hocus Pocus shirt. And of course, I bought the illustrated version of Hocus Pocus. When I saw that this was coming out, I was so excited because I love Hocus Pocus. I watch it every year. This one, it's got really cool antique looking pages and artwork. And so, of course, I just, I had to have this one. If you are a Hocus Pocus fan, I think you will absolutely love this. I'm very excited to read it. Another book I was very, very excited to get is this one, Love in the Time of Serial Killers. This one is by Alicia Thompson. This one just sounded really good to me. And I love the way the cover looks. It almost reminds me of like a comic book. And as you can see, I'm a little over halfway through. I've got my tabs going. I'm pretty much just highlighting. You can see my yellow tabs are things that are like, things I'm familiar with, uh, like pop culture references or things like that. And the pink tabs are like quotes I like, uh, things that characters have said that I think are um, wise or deep or something, I, something that just made me feel a certain way. Uh, so this one, what's kind of cool about this, and I know some people don't like this book because of it, is that there's a lot of pop culture references, and I enjoy this because I understand the references. So for me, a lot of the times, her humor and the way that she's dropping these references is funny. Um, this girl, let me tell you what it's about. First of all, this girl, she's obsessed with like true crime. She's writing a dissertation about it, and she moves in to this house to clean it up um and she thinks her neighbor is like a serial killer because she's like watching him and suspicious of things he's doing um so it's really entertaining and i i like the main character a lot so i'm almost done with this i really like it this was a good pick i'm definitely on my way to a five star with this one so um hopefully it ends as well as it's been going this next book I was so excited for when I found it was coming out. I actually didn't know it was coming out until I just found out that I think it was like September 20th is when it came out and I went straight to the bookstore to pick myself up a copy and it is The Kiss Curse by Erin Sterling. This is the same author you can see that wrote The X-Hex which was probably one of my favorite books last year. I think it was my second favorite after Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. So <laughs> as soon as I saw that there was like a follow-up, I was so excited. I just, I had to go get it. So this one is a, in the same world as the first one. So you'll want to read the X-Hex first. Um, both are centered around Halloween, which I'm obsessed with. <laughs> as you can tell, I've already got my Halloween, my these are my new skeletons. They're yoga skeletons and I think they're hilarious and I love them. <laughs> and uh, this is also a new purchase. It is a candle with a, it looks like a brain. I got this at Michael's. I saw it. I was just like, I love it. I'm into it. So this book, let me tell you what it's about. Um, I don't want to read too much about it just because I, I don't know. I'm so excited to read it. I don't want to spoil it too much. So I just quickly read the back, but it's the same I don't know if it's the same exact characters. Was Gwen Jones an XX? Vivian. Okay, so this book, the main character character is Vivian. In this book, it is Gwen. So I think they're cousins. Yeah, they're cousins. So this is like a story from her cousin's person, Gwen, the cousin's perspective, which is really cool. But I love I love the XX, so please read it. If you have not. Okay, another book that I was excited for because it is new, just came out. It's a special edition. And um, when I was younger, I really loved Goosebumps books. So 
I found out that they had a new, you can see here, special edition, Goosebumps Slappy Beware RL Sign. This is a brand new book. It published 2022, so, um, and it's hardcover, which every Goosebumps book I have, I don't have that many. I think I have like three. They're all soft covers. So um, I really wanted to get this one. Uh, it just reminds me of my childhood. And I absolutely love, like I'm obsessed with the two Goosebumps movies that have come out um, with Jack Black in them. I just love those movies and I'm like, let's like more, we need more like of this Slappy because he's like one of the main characters of those two movies. So um, I really wanted to get this one. This book is about Slappy coming back to life, which is this dummy, don't call him a dummy, right? <laughs> um, and he's trying to ruin the life of this family, but all of, all of his attempts are just not working. So that's probably frustrating for a villain. This next book I bought, it was my birthday present to myself and I heard really good reviews about it. And so I wanted to try reading it for myself, especially for the October season. And it is Slewfoot and this is by Brom. And um, there's a lot of artwork in this. Let me open up to some, let's see. So there's just one. I wish more books would do this. Like, it's really cool. We got spider there. We've got like a <laughs> creepy looking thing there. So this is about like a woman who's an outcast and she turns to like, I don't know if it's the devil. I think a demon? Slewfoot. She turns to Slewfoot, which is a demon, um, to kind of help her out. So... Um, very interested in this. It takes place in 1666 and I just, I thought it was a very beautiful cover. Um, and I just heard it was good. So I'm ready to read this. My book of the month pick was S Killers of a Certain Age. This is by Deanna Rayborn. I have not read any other books by this authors, but like, I really want to read. I think it's like, is it the Veronica Speedwell? I might be wrong. If I'm wrong, let me know. Um, but I've heard that those were good and it's a series. So I eventually want to get into that. Um, but I want to try reading this one. So this one is like a group of people. I think they were like assassins and then they retired, um, but they're getting hunted. I think that's like the main plot of this story. Sounds good to me. This book um, that I'm going to show you right now was definitely an impulse buy, but it's right up my alley. It's <laughs> something I love. Um, this book is called The Littlest Library, and it's by Poppy Alexander. Just seeing the cover, I was like, excuse me, Little Free Library, what? <laughs> and so I just really wanted to get this, and it's about a girl who moves to, it's like this cottage where her grandmother used to live or something. And she has this huge book collection and she happens to have this old like telephone thing on the property. And the main character is an ex-librarian. She loves books and she decides I'm going to make my own little free library. And so she does. And I just absolutely love the artwork on this cover. It's so beautiful. And so I'm really excited to read this one. I think it'll be a very cute book. And you know, I love little free, little free libraries. I got this little, um, it's like a Christmas village piece, but I saw it at Michael's and I was like a little free library. Like <laughs> I have to get this and put it on my bookshelf. So it lives here now. And um, I wanted to fit it into my, I have a spooky village, um, but it didn't fit. It's like bigger than all the other pieces and just didn't fit for me. So um, it will be here for its lifetime, <laughs> which I'm okay with. This next book I wanted to get because I love haunted house books. And so this is in, I found this in the YA section. And it's called These Fleeting Shadows by Kate Else Marshall. And this one, as soon as I read the synopsis, I knew I wanted to read it because haunted houses are, 
I think it's one of my favorite book themes that I like to read. It's, I, I don't know why, haunted houses and being, like, being stuck on a haunted house on an island is, <laughs> like, one of my favorite go-tos. Like, if that's in, if that's in the synopsis at all, like, usually I'm, like, I'm reading that. So this one is about um, a family or, I guess, the main character um, actually inherits this house. And, like, she's not sure why it was her that inherited it. Um, but it's a haunted house. And uh, I don't know. That's, I don't want to read too much into it because I don't want to, like, spoil myself. I don't know if you guys do the same thing. Like, read not read a lot of synopsis or try not to read too much of it usually I'll read like the first paragraph of the synopsis and then just be like okay good enough for me <laughs> um, so there's that the last book that I have picked up is Maureen Kilmer's Suburban Hell Ooh. I just dropped these um, I get these at I got them at Vroman's they're highlighter strips and a bookmark but I absolutely love these because if you like to highlight your books, but you also don't want to like damage your books, these stickers are amazing. Like they peel off really easy and they don't rip any of the page off and they actually look like you highlighted it, but um, the tabs will still stick out at the end. So it's like a tab and a highlighter and a bookmark all in one. Amazing. This one I wanted to get because for some reason it just reminded me so much of the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I have to think every time I say that title. So this one's about a group of women who kind of get together and they want to do like projects like um, they build like a she shed and they want to do home improvement stuff. But somewhere along the way, they awaken a demonic force. <laughs> and so they're going to have to like fight <laughs> that demonic force. It sounds good. Um, I totally just realized the shed looks haunted. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so those are all the new books that I have purchased, and I'm very excited to read those. A lot of them are going to be, like, my goal to read in October, because, of course, a lot of them are spooky or Halloween-themed books. So, now on to the books that I have read recently. So, one is an ebook, and it is this one. I am actually really liking Darcy Coates' books. So, um, the car, is it Caro Haunt? Yeah, they, they all have like haunt in the title. Anyway, I actually really like this one. Again, haunted house on an island, um, people disappearing one by one. This was a good book. It was nice and creepy. There's, um, it's about ghosts. So if you don't like ghosts, you might not like this one. I highly recommend if you want a spooky story. It was a good one. Darcy Coates, I've read about three or four novels and only one was a dud in my opinion. So, but the other ones have been really good. Another book I've finally read is Verity by Colleen Hoover. This one, I knew to expect a bit of a mind twister. A lot of people kind of explained this story in a way where you knew there was like twists and turns, which there were, um, especially once you've finished the book. Now I really want to go back and see people's thoughts on it because definitely knowing the ending kind of changed the whole book for me. So I encourage you to read this. And those of you who have read this will know, um, you know, some of the chapters in here are... A little hard to read so I don't know for me they were hard to read um, <laughs> and definitely made me say, think about certain characters in a certain light and yeah it was good I really liked this one I think is it my favorite Colleen Hoover so far I've only read a handful I've read like four uh, but I really love it ends with us I just I thought it was a nice story but this one's definitely I think more my vibe because I like the thrillers and more intense kind of stuff so this one really good I didn't tab very much of it though so it maybe it's just I was enjoying it too much another book I read that um <laughs> something exciting is that this is going to be a movie and I didn't even know that I had no idea I read this like two weeks ago 
And as I was reading it, I thought, oh my gosh, this would make such a good movie. Why hasn't anyone made this into a movie? Uh, <laughs> and I found out that today it comes out on Prime and it is my best friend's exorcism. So I knew I wanted to read this when it was hot out, <laughs> more summery, because... I just heard that that was a better time to read it because like these are about a group of friends they go to a lake and one of the girls I think I think I think like in the synopsis it says that sh something happens to her and she's acting differently and her friend thinks that she's possessed so if you haven't read this I highly encourage you to. I'm excited to see if the movie is going to be similar already I feel like the beginning of the movie is different than the book just from watching the trailer or I'm like or I didn't read the book close enough or something um but I'm excited to see where it goes this one was really good especially if you like horror um there's some pretty gross stuff in here like if you haven't read a Grady Hendrix novel then you might not know what you're in store for if you've read a Grady Hendrix novel you know that it can be somewhat descriptive maybe even a little like too descriptive <laughs> make you cringe a little bit make you grossed out a little bit uh, but I still love it so I thought it was good maybe just don't eat while you're reading this book maybe um, I'm trying to think what else there's definitely I think there were bugs in this that grossed me out for sure like insects um, anyway <laughs> so this one was really good. I read it, I think in like two days. I zoomed through this book. I didn't want to put it down, but it was good. This book, Victoria Schwab, City of Ghosts. This is the first in a series, I believe. And it's a middle grade book, but I, I actually didn't like it too much. I, I was a little bit not into it. I started reading this on like Friday the 13th, like way long ago <laughs> earlier in this year and it literally took me months and months and months to get through it. It was still an enjoyable read but there were so many other books I was into but I liked it enough to finish it. So for me it's it was like a I gave it three out of five stars because I enjoyed it but this is probably not one I'm going to keep. I'll probably put it in a, a little free library somewhere um, for someone else to enjoy because I know this is a very popular author and people like these books. I just, it, it wasn't like my top favorite. I still enjoyed it, but it's not one that I'm like super excited about or hoping they make a movie of it. However, it would still be kind of a cool movie. So this is about a girl who can, um, she goes through like a veil and can see ghosts and, and um, I don't know what else to say that's not gonna get like anything away. I don't know what else to say about this but the cover's cool. It's like an x-ray. It looks like an x-ray photo. Um, I also read a book called The Mall. I'll put it up here. This one was fun. It was very 90s like the year in the 1990s. Um, so it reminded me a lot of being a kid you know like going to the mall to hang out with friends and uh, stuff like that. So it was, it was a cute book but um took me a while to get through it and actually it's it was hard to find my library had it luckily um but then when I was like halfway through reading it all of a sudden it like vanished and it was like the library no longer owns the copyright to this uh, so I had to go to a different library to get the ebook of it uh, but all in all I finished it and it was okay um I think if you like the 90s vibe you'll enjoy it so it's like about a girl who um, she gets like broken up with in the first chapter or cheated on or whatever. And it's about her. She was very like, our plan was to do this, go to school together, be together forever, blah, blah, blah. And then he breaks up with her and she's kind of lost. Like we had a plan and now you ruined my plan. I don't know how to cope. So like that was, it was fun seeing her journey um, getting to more make her own plan to stand on her own two feet and be a little more spontaneous so um that one was enjoyable but again not my favorite like if I see it I'm not gonna buy it uh oh, but a book I did really like is this one The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager I am a Riley Sager fan 
I have read almost all of the books by this author. Um, I still have to read The Last Time I Lied and Survive the Night. So those are like, I think those are the only two I have left to read. As you get closer to the end, it's almost like every chapter, you're like, wait, what? And you're like, now I have to keep reading. And you keep going and you're like, whoa. And you're like, oh, I bet this is gonna happen. And it's like, what, no, what? Anyway, that was me reading this book. <laughs> so um, this was, I don't know if I would rate it four or five stars. Um, I don't like giving a lot of books five stars. I have to be like, I have to be like super shocked when I read it. So for example, Home Before Dark by Riley Sager was a book that I read it and I was just like, I have to read this again. Oh my gosh, it's so good. And I was telling everyone, you have to read this, you have to read this. I, that is when I give a book five stars, when I just, when I like need everyone else like to read it right now. So, so this one is like more like four and a half, four stars. So, uh, I definitely enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to reading my final two Riley Sager novels and I look forward to whatever else the author wants to put out because I will definitely be reading it. I think that's it. I've got my BTS bullet journal here <laughs> and it has, um, I made like this just little spread that has like my book goals and then this is books I've read. Um, so the Caro, Caro Haunt, City of Goes. I think I got them all. Oh, there's one in here I don't think I've ever talked about. It's called The Swimmers. I'll put it up here. And I cannot remember the author's name, but it's right here on the video. And, well, I didn't really like this one because I didn't understand the point of it. So, like, the first half of the book was just talking about, it was just, like, people talking about swimming and how they were, like, obsessed with it and how it was their whole world. And then, like, the second half of the book was really depressing. And I was like, what did I sign myself up for? But I, I finished it because it's a really short book. It's, like... It, it's like the same length of, as reading Convenience Store Woman or something. So it was, I mean, it was still a good book and it made me think a little bit and it made me want to go swimming. But other than that, um, I wasn't a big fan. So I'm holding a stack of books that I'm going to unhaul because these are books that I got at a library, like Friends of the Library sales. A lot of them are classics. Some of them I've already read and I wanted to get them just to have them right on my shelf. Um, but I need more room on my shelves and I'm like, I'm never going to read these. I already know myself. I'm not going to read them. Some of them I've already read. I'm not going to reread. So I'm just going to show you real quick. These are going to be books that I'm going to put in little free libraries. Um, yeah, because a lot of them are like books you'd read in high school. So I feel like little free libraries would be a good place to put them because... The parents can just pick up the copy if their kid needs it. So there's Into the Wild. I've never watched the movie or read the book and um, I'm never going to probably. Anthem by Anne Rand. There's this one, Siddhartha by Herman Hess. This one, there's like notes in it. <laughs> so that's always really cool. I like seeing books that have notes, people writing things in it. But... There is Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe. This one I only picked up because there's a board game called Robinson Crusoe that I really, really love. <laughs> but I'm like, I don't think I'm ever going to read this story. There is Sherlock Holmes, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, The, Hounds, the Hound of Bakersfield. Bakerville. Ray Bradbury, The Illustrated Man. I read other books by this author, but um, I don't think I'm going to read this one. This next one, I kind of want to keep, but kind of not, but it's Elle Enchanted. I like the movie a lot, but um, I'm pretty sure I read this book when I was like 12. And I just don't know if I'll ever read it again. The last one I'm going to unhaul is one that I bought at a library, like I said, but it's called Frozen. It's a place called New Vegas, so I think it's like Las Vegas, if it were covered in ice or something. So it seemed interesting. But the more I thought about it, the more I was like, I'd rather have room on my shelves for some of these other books. So I do need to go through and unhaul some more books, but that's going to be it for now. That's like a good pile to take to a few library, little free libraries. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you found some books that you are interested to read and 
I know for sure I'm excited to read a lot of these. I hope my October reading month is as good as my September was because I'm very much looking forward to a lot of these books. So thank you so much for watching and I hope that you have a great spooky season and I will see you later. Bye!